The history of every major galactic civilization has three distinct and recognizable phases, those of survival, inquiry, and sophistication, otherwise known as the how, why, and where phases. For instance, the first phase is characterized by the question, how can we eat? And the second by the question, why do we eat? And the third by the question, where shall we have lunch? Though it will usually take a large civilization many thousands of years to pass through the how, why and where phases, smaller social groupings under stressful conditions can pass through these phases with extreme rapidity. Thus. How are we doing? Badly. Where are we going? I don't know. Why not? Shut, Shut up. up. Oh, basically what you're trying to say is that we're out of control. It's the wild color scheme that freaks me. Every time you try to operate one of these weird black controls which are labeled in black on a black background, a small black light lights up black to let you know you've done it. What is this, some kind of galactic hyperhearse? Perhaps it was designed by somebody with eyes that respond to different wavelengths. Or didn't have much imagination. Perhaps she was feeling very depressed. It's making me feel space sick. Time sick. We're plummeting backwards through time. Oh, God. No, I think I really am going to be ill. Go ahead. We could do with a little color about the place. Oh, well, this is civilized after dinner conversation. Hey, look, Earth man, you, you've got a job to do, right? The question to the ultimate answer, right? There's a lot of loot tied up in that head thing of yours. Just think of the merchandising. Ultimate question T-shirts. Ultimate question biscuits. Well, yes, but where do we start? I don't know. The ultimate answer, so-called, is 42. Well, what's the question? How am I supposed to know? Could be anything. I mean, what's six times seven? Uh, um, 42. 42. Yes, I know that. I'm just saying the question could be anything. How should I know? Because you're the last one. You were there when your planet did the big firework. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. I just don't know. I know. Shut up, Marvin. This is organism talk. It's printed in the Earth man's brainwave patterns, but I don't suppose you'll be very interested in hearing that. You mean you can see into my mind? Yes. And? It amazes me how you manage to live in anything that small. Ah, abuse. Yes. Oh, ignore him. He's only making it up. Making it up? Why should I want to make anything up? Life's bad enough as it is without wanting to invent any more of it. Marvin, if you knew what it was all along, why didn't you tell us? You didn't ask. Well, we're asking you now, Metal Man. What's the question? The ultimate question. Yes. The ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. Yes. To which the answer is 42. Yes, yes come, come on. on. I can tell that you're not really interested. Will you just tell us, you motorized maniac? That sounds better. Have you managed to sort out the controls? No, I just stopped fiddling with them. I could tell you weren't really interested. I think this ship has a far better idea of where it's going than we do. I wonder who it belongs to. Me. No, who it really belongs to. Really me. Property is theft, right? Therefore, theft is property. Therefore, this ship is mine, OK? Tell the ship that. Ship, this is your new owner speaking to you. <laughs> Tell me what you think I'm thinking. I think you're thinking it's time we got off this ship. I think you're right. I think you're right. Why? What's happening? Quiet. We're, We're thinking. thinking. Find another radio channel. I'm Miller for the concert this afternoon. I'm standing on the stage here in the middle of the Kakrafoon Desert, and with the aid of hyperbinoptic glasses, I can just make out the huge audience cowering there on the horizon all around us. Behind me, the speaker stacks rise like a sheer cliff face, and high above me, the sun is shining away and doesn't know what's going to hit it. The environmentalist lobby do know what's going to hit it and claim that the concert will cause earthquakes, tidal waves, hurricanes, irreparable damage to the atmosphere, and all the other things that environmentalists usually go on about. But I've just had a report that the representative of Disaster Area met with the environmentalists this morning and had a all shot. So nothing now stands in the way of the concert going up. We're going into the sun. I don't understand. This ship is just a huge stage prop. We're going to dive into the sun. And that's bad, is it? Yes. Perhaps you can do something with your towel. No. So this is it. We're going to die. Will you stop saying that? One of the things Ford Prefect had always found hardest to understand about human beings was their habit of continually stating and restating the very, very obvious. As in, it's a nice day, or... You're very tall. Or, so this is it, we're going to die. 
At first, Ford had formed a theory to account for this strange behavior. If human beings don't keep exercising their lips, he thought, their mouths probably seize up. After a while, he abandoned this theory in favor of a new one. If they don't keep exercising their lips, he thought, their brains start working. In fact, this second theory is more literally true of the Belserabon people of Kakrafun Kappa. The Belserabons used to cause great resentment and insecurity amongst neighboring races by being one of the most enlightened, accomplished, serene, and above all, quiet civilizations in the galaxy. As a punishment for this behavior, which was held to be offensively self-righteous and provocative, a galactic tribunal inflicted on them that most cruel of all social diseases, telepathy. Now, in order to prevent themselves broadcasting every slightest thought that crosses their minds to anyone within a five-mile radius, they have to talk loudly and continuously about the weather, the trouble with sand, and also about what an appallingly noisy place Takrafun has suddenly become. Another method of temporarily blotting out their minds is to play host to a disaster area concert. This is it. We're starting to dive right on course for the sun. Ford, how many escape capsules are there? None. You counted them? Twice. You get the stage crew on the radio? Yeah, I said there was a whole bunch of people on board. They said there was a whole bunch of nothing they could do. You said who you were? Yeah, they said it was a great honor. What does teleport mean? What, what did, did you, you say? say? Sorry, probably the wrong moment to read well, Where does it say teleport? Well, there, just under the word emergency and above the word system, next to the sign saying out of order. Hell's donkeys! Well, it seems okay. It's just the guidance system that's cocked up. Who cares where we go? Let's just get out. Oh, no, no, the auto system's gone too. Someone would have to stay and operate it. Hey, Marvin. Kid, how you doing? Very badly, I suspect. Would you like to... <laughs> um... Lay down my life selflessly for you? Make the ultimate sacrifice? Um, yeah. Consign my brain, which is the size of a planet, to death in the heart of a blazing sun so that you can all escape and yeah, save yeah. your tiny life. Yeah, there's nothing to go on about here, OK? All right, all right. You better all get into the teleport. Come on, guys. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah. OK, Marvin. Thanks, metal pal. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, see you. Excitement and adventure and really wild things. I suppose some people might have expected better treatment after having waited for 576,000 million years, but not me. No. I may just be a menial robot, but I'm far too intelligent to expect anyone to think of me for a moment. Far, far too intelligent. Zephod? Trillion? Where are they? Dunno. No reason we'd all end up in the same place. They could be anywhere. So could we, for that matter. Looks like we're inside another spaceship. Yeah. Do you think they might be uh, dead? I don't know. I don't want to think about it right now. Difficult not to. I mean, this place looks like a mausoleum, doesn't it? You're right. The place is full of sarcophagi, as far as the eye can see. Wow. What's so great about dead people? I don't know. Let's have a look. Here! There's a plaque on this one. What does it say? Golga Frincham Ark Fleet, Ship B, Hold 7, Telephone Sanitizer, Second Class. And a serial number. Telephone Sanitizer? A dead telephone sanitizer? Best kind. But what's he doing here? Not a lot. No, but I mean, why? Good God. This one's a dead hairdresser. And this one here's an advertising account executive. And here's a second-hand car salesman, third class. Are these really coffins? They're terribly cold. All right, ah. hold it right there. Put your hands up and turn around slowly. Hello? Why isn't anyone ever pleased to see us?
Captain? Yes, number one. I've just had a, a sort of report thing from number two. Oh, dear. Well, he was shouting something or other about having found some prisoners. Oh, well, perhaps that'll keep him happy for a bit. He's always wanted oh. some. Captain, sir! Ah, uh, hello, number two. Having a nice day? I've brought you the prisoners. I located in Freezer Bay 7, sir. Uh, hello. 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 Excuse me not getting up. I'm just having a quick bath. Well, uh, gin and tonics all round, then. Look in the fridge, number one. Oh, certainly, sir. Don't you want to interrogate the prisoners, sir? Now, why on earth would I want to do that? <laughs> to get information out of them, sir. Find out why they came here, sir. No, 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 no. I expect they just dropped in for a quick gin and tonic, don't you? But, sir, they're my prisoners. Can't I just interrogate them a little bit? No, all right, if you must. Ask them what they want to drink. Oh, thank you, sir. All right, you scum! You vermin! No, steady on, number two. What do you want to drink? Well, the gin and tonic sounds very nice to me. Arthur? What? Oh, oh, yes. With ice or without? Oh, with, please. Lemon? Oh, yes, please. And do you have any of those little biscuits? You know, the cheesy ones. I, I'm asking the question. And uh, number two. Sir! Uh, push off, would you? There's a good chap. I'm trying to have a relaxing bath. Sir! May I remind you that you have now been in that bath for over three years? Yes, well, you need to relax a lot in a job like mine. What on earth's going on? Could I ask you, actually, what your job is, in fact? Uh, your drinks. Oh, yes. thanks, thanks. I mean, I couldn't help noticing, you know, the bodies. Yeah, well, bodies? All those dead telephone sanitizers and account executives, you know, in the hole. Oh, they're not dead, good Lord, no, no. They're just frozen, they're going to be revived. You really mean you've got a hold full of frozen hairdressers? Yes, millions of them. Hairdressers, tired TV producers, insurance salesmen, personnel officers. Security guards, public relations executives. Management consultants, pipe bands, you name it, we've got it. We're going to colonize another planet. What? Exciting, eh, isn't it? What, with that lot? Well, now, don't misunderstand me. We're just one of the ships in the Ark fleet. We're the B Ark, you see. Uh, sorry, could I just ask you, uh, do run a bit more hot water for me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, now, do help yourself to more drinks, of course. Thanks. What's a B Ark? Eh? Yeah? Oh, well, what happened, you see, was our planet was doomed. Doomed? Oh, yes. So what everyone thought was, let's pack the whole population into some giant spaceships and go and settle on another planet. You mean uh, a less doomed one? Yeah, precisely. So it was decided to build three ships, three arcs in space. I'm not boring you, am I? No, no, it's fascinating. Oh, it's delightful to have someone else to talk to for a change. Travel with a long journey like this is that you end up just talking to yourself a lot, which gets terribly boring, because half the time you know what you're going to say next. Only half the time? Yes, about half, I'd say. Anyway, it... where's the soap? Ah, yes, so, so the idea was that into the first ship, the A ship, would go all the brilliant leaders, the scientists, the great artists, you know, all the, the achievers. And then into the third or C ship would go all the people who did the actual work, who made things and did things. And then into the B ship, that's us, us yes, <laughs> would go everyone else, the middlemen, you see. And we were sent off first. But what was wrong with your planet? Oh, it was doomed, as I said. Apparently it was going to crash into the sun. Or was it that the moon was going to crash into us? Oh, I thought it was that the planet was going to be invaded by a gigantic swarm of 12-foot piranha bees. That's not what I was told. Hmm? My commanding officer swore blind that the entire planet was in imminent danger of being eaten by an enormous mutant star goat. Oh, really? Yeah, and he said he only wished he was going off in the first ship, too. Uh, but they made sure that they sent all you lot off first anyway. Yes, well, everyone said very nicely, I thought, that it was very important for morale to feel that they would be arriving on a planet where they could be sure of a good haircut and where the phones were clean. Oh, yes, well, I can see that would be very important. You? And uh, the other ships followed on after you, did they? Uh, well, it's, it's funny you should mention that, because curiously enough, we haven't actually heard a peep out of them since we left five years ago. But they must be behind us somewhere. <laughs> Unless, of course, they were eaten by the goat. Ah, uh, yes, the goat. Well... It's a funny thing, you know, now that I actually come to tell the story to someone else, I mean, 
Does it strike you as odd, number one? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, well. well, I can see that you've got a lot of things you're going to want to talk about, so thanks for the drinks, and if you could sort of drop us off at the nearest convenient planet. Uh, well, that's a little difficult, you see, because our trajectory thingy was preset before we left Golga Frinsham. I think partly because I'm not actually very good with figures. You mean we're stuck here on this ship? Oh, bloody hell. Well, when are you going to reach the planet you're meant to be colonising? Oh, we're nearly there, I think, any second now. <laughs> Probably time I got out of the bath, in fact. Uh, oh, I don't know, though. Why stop just when I'm enjoying it? So we're actually going to land in a minute? Well, not so much land, in fact. I think, as far as I can remember, we were programmed to crash on it. Crash? Yes, it's all part of the plan, I think. There was a terribly good reason for it, which I can't quite remember at the moment. You're a load of useless bloody loonies. Yes, that was it. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has this to say about the planet of Golga Frinsham. It is a planet with an ancient and mysterious history in which the most mysterious figures of all are without doubt those of the great circling poets of Ariel. These circling poets used to live in remote mountain passes where they would lie in wait for small bands of unwary travellers, circle round them and throw rocks at them. And when the travellers cried out, saying, why didn't they go away and get on with writing some poems instead of pestering people with all this rock-throwing business, they would suddenly break off and sing them a beautiful and incredibly lengthy song in which they told of how there once went forth from the city of the Cillian a party of five sage princes with four horses. The first part of the song tells how these five sage princes, who are of course brave, noble and wise, travel widely in distant lands, fight giant ogres, pursue exotic philosophies, take tea with weird gods, and rescue beautiful monsters from ravening princesses, before finally announcing that they have achieved enlightenment and that their wanderings are therefore accomplished. The second and much longer part tells of all their bickerings about which one of them is going to have to walk back. It was a descendant of these eccentric poets who invented these spurious tales of impending doom which enabled the people of Golga Frinsham to rid themselves of an entire useless third of their population. The other two thirds, of course, stayed at home and lived full, rich and happy lives until they were all suddenly wiped out by a virulent disease contracted from a dirty telephone. Meanwhile, Arthur Dent, Ford Prefect, and an arc load of frozen middle management men have crashed into the prehistoric dawn of a small blue-green planet circling an unregarded yellow sun at the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy. After a year or so, they convene a meeting to consider their position, which is not, on the whole, good. I, I would like to call to order the 573rd meeting of the Colonization Committee of the Planet of Fintel Woodlewicks. Do you have a quick drink, thanks? Not while I'm in the bath. As a fully trained management consultant, I must insist on the importance of observing the committee's oh, this structure. Is futile. Look, do we really need the pipe? Uh, oh, I think so. We've given him a grant, you know. 572 committee meetings, and you haven't even discovered fire yet. If you care to look at the agenda sheet, you'll see that we're about to have a report from the hairdresser's fire development subcommittee today. Yes, well, you know what they've done, don't you? You gave them a couple of sticks, and they've developed them into a pair of scissors. When you've been in marketing as long as I have, you'll know that before any new product can be developed, it has to be properly researched. We've got to find out what people want from fire, how they relate to it, the image... Oh, that stick it, it up your nose. Which is precisely the sort of thing we need to know. Do people want fire that can be fitted nasally? And the wheel. What about this wheel thing? It sounds a terribly interesting project. Ah, well, we're having a little difficulty there. Difficulty? It's the single simplest machine in the entire universe. All right, Mr. Wise Guy, if you're so clever, you tell us what color it should be. Oh, almighty, Sarkwan. Has no one done anything? Well? well? I've declared war on the next continent. Declared war? There's no one even living there. Oh, yes, but there will be one day. So we've left a sort of open-ended ultimatum. What? And blown up a few military installations. Military installations, number two? Oh, yes, sir. Well, potential military installations. Huh? Oh, all right. Trees. Mm. And we interrogated a gazelle. 
And, of course, Finlon, the producer, has rescued a camera from the wreckage of the ship and is making a fascinating documentary on the indigenous cavemen of the area. Yes, and they're dying out. Have you noticed that? Yes, we must make a note, sir, to stop selling them life insurance. But don't you understand? Just since we've arrived, they've started dying out. Yes, and this comes over terribly well in the film he's making. I gather he wants to make a documentary about you next, Captain. Oh, really? Well, that's awfully nice. He's got a very strong angle on it, you know. The burden of responsibility, the loneliness of command. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't overstress that angle, you know. One, one's never alone with a rubber duck. <laughs> Mm, yeah. uh, if we could for a moment move on to the subject of fiscal policy. Fiscal policy? Uh, How can you have money if none of you actually produce anything? It doesn't grow on trees, you know. If you would allow me to continue. Thank you. Since we decided to adopt leaves as legal tender, we have, of course, all become immensely rich. Oh, right. But we have also run into a small inflation problem on account of the high level of leaf availability, which means that I gather the current going rate has something like three major deciduous forests buying one ship's peanut. So, in order to obviate this problem and effectively revalue the leaf, we're about to embark on an extensive defoliation campaign and uh, burn down all the forests. <laughs> I think that's a sensible move, don't you? Absolutely. Very, very sound. Okay, very sound. Okay, okay, okay. Excuse me, has anybody got a rock? Could you pass it? Is it perhaps in order to inquire what you've been doing all this time? You and that other interloper have been missing for months. Yeah, well, with respect, love, we've been travelling around trying to find out something about this planet. Oh, well, that doesn't sound very productive. I oh, no, thought that... No, no. Well, have I got news for you. It doesn't matter a pair of fetid dingo's kidneys what you all choose to do from now on. Burn down the forest, anything. It won't make a scrap of difference. Two million years you've got, and that's it. At the end of that, your race will be dead, gone, and good riddance to you. Remember that, two million years. Oh, well, just time for another bath. Pass me the sponge, somebody. Here you are, sir. No, no. Q scores ten, you see, and it's on a triple word score. So, uh, so, uh, no, I'm sorry, but I explained the rules. Uh, no, no, look, please, put down that jawbone. Uh, all right, all right, we'll start again and try to concentrate this time. Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying to teach the caveman to play Scrabble. It's uphill work. The only word he knows is grunt, and he can't spell it. And would you please tell me what that is supposed to achieve? We've got to encourage them to evolve, Ford. Can you imagine what a world is going to be like that descends from those cretins over there? We don't have to imagine. Let's face it. We already know what it's like. We've seen it. There's no escape. Did you tell them what we discovered? Slarty Bartfast's signature on the glacier? No, what's the point? Why should they listen? What's it to them that this planet happens to be called the Earth? And that it happens to be my original home? Yes, but you won't even be born for nearly two million years, oh, so yes. they're likely to feel that it's not a lot of your business. Face up to it, Arthur. Those Zebes over there are your ancestors, not these cavemen. Put the Scrabble away. It won't save the human race because Mr. Ugg here is not destined to be the human race. The human race is currently sitting around that rock over there making documentaries about themselves. But there must be something we can do. No, no, nothing, really nothing, because it's all been done. Listen, we've been backwards and forwards through time and ended up here, two million years behind where we started. But that doesn't change the future because we've seen it. We know the Earth ends up being cleared away by the Vogons to make way for a new hyperspace bypass. Wise up, kid. There's nothing you can do to change it because it's already happened. And all because we arrived here with the Golg of Frinchams in their B-Arc. Yes. <coughs> oh, bloody caveman. It's all been a bit of a waste of time for you, hasn't it? You've been out-evolved by a telephone sanitizer. <coughs> He's pointing at the Scrabble board. Oh, he's probably spelt library with one R again, poor bastard. <coughs> no, he hasn't. Hey! No, look! It says 42. The experiment, it's something to do with the computer program to find the ultimate question. Hey, you know what this means, don't you? What? It must have gone wrong. If the computer matrix was set up to follow the evolution of the human race through from the cavemen, and then we've arrived and caused them to die out... And actually replaced them... Then the whole thing is cocked up. So whatever it was that Marvin spotted in my brainwave patterns is in fact the wrong question. Yeah, it might be right, but it's probably wrong. If only we could find out what it is. Well, um, how about... Look, if it's printed in my brainwave patterns, but I don't know how to reach it, suppose we introduce some random element which can be shaped by that pattern. Like? Pulling out letters from the Scrabble bag. 
Brilliant. That's bloody brilliant. Right. First four letters. Right. Uh, w H A T. What? Two more. D O do. Hey, it's working. Hey, this is terrific. Hey. It's really coming. Uh, y you, you, um, uh, get. What do you get? Oh, here. Uh, if, if, uh, you, M U L T. Uh, multiply. I'm beginning to get a sinking oh. feeling about this. If you multiply uh, s uh, six by 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 nine by nine, is that it? That's it. Six by nine, forty-two. Something certainly got screwed up somewhere. Yeah. I always said there was something fundamentally wrong with the universe. So what do we do now? I guess we just swallow our pride and go and join the human race. Yes. <laughs> Right, mate. Ugh. It's sad, though. Just at the moment, it's a very beautiful planet. It is. It is indeed. The rich primal greens, the river snaking off into the distance, the burning trees. And in two million years, bang, it gets destroyed by the Vogons. What a life for a young planet to look forward to. Well, better than some. I read of one planet off in the seventh dimension that got used as a ball in a game of intergalactic bar billiards. Got potted straight into a black hole, killed 10 billion people. Mm. Total madness. Yeah. Only scored 30 points to it. Where did you read that? Uh, a book. Which book was that? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, that thing. Mm -hmm.